Good afternoon, everyone. You can say good back if you want. Welcome in Jesus' name. We gather to give thanks to Almighty God for the life of our wonderful sister, Sandra and Carol. Most of you, I hope all of you, have bulletins. The entire service is in here, uh, including the hymns. And um, there will be a time right after we finish with the opening part of the service where if there's someone who would like to say a few words, we do so. And I just want to let you know that that opportunity will come up as well. Let us begin, and if you will, please stay. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall ever die. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Thanks be to God. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection.
We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us your aid so we may see in death the gate to eternal life, that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with us in our grief. Surround us with your love, that we may not be overwhelmed by our loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. This time, if there are any of you who would like to issue a tribute or say a few words, please come up and do so. Amen. There was 42 years ago, Sandy played in my wedding. Me, Sandy, and my sister, we would always go and sing at the nursing homes and different organizations that was going on. And Sandy would always be our piano. Sandy was a sister to us. She ate many meals at our house. Granny was our granny. Her granny was our granny. We called her granny. So we go back a long ways. But now, today, I'm going to do the best I can. I used to sing back granny. <laughs> But this was her wish for me to sing, and I'm going to sing Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. And um, y'all just bear with me. I, Sandy figured I could do it, so I can do it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. 
from Job. Oh, that my words were written down. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and with lead they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see at my side, and my eyes shall behold, and not enough. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And together let us say Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own Son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress, or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or peril or sword, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Glory. Please stand and let us sing the song. <clears throat> the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff may come to me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head to the devil, my cup from the door. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, 
I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Sandra, all of you who are friends, all of you who have known Sandra in any number of ways, and of course, all of you who are members of this congregation. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I would dare say that most of us here are still pretty much in shock. When word came to us last Sunday about Sandra's passing, I think a lot of us just did not know how to do it or how to respond to it. It really was a heavy loss for all of us. We lost here at this church a wonderful worker and a mighty, wonderful lady. But then again, family, this was hard. Not only for family, but also for friends, for those of you who worked with her for years, for those of you who knew her and who loved her. And yet in the midst of all of this, we come here this afternoon professing one thing, and that is this, that in all things, God has given up his son in order to bring Sandra and all of us into eternal life. And that's why this afternoon, in addition to the sorrow we feel, there is a sense of joy and gratitude that also binds us together. Let me tell you what it was like here to have Sandra as part of this congregation. Before I came here, there was a call committee that was set up between St. Peter's Lutheran and Faith Lutheran in downtown Stanton. Sandra was on that committee, at least from St. Peter's, and she had the awesome responsibility of calling one of my friends to see if I would be a fit for St. Peter's. <laughs> she called Pastor Patrick Rooney. Pastor Rooney is British, very British. And Sandra said that a 10 minute conversation turned into an hour and a half because she just couldn't stop listening to his accent. <laughs> and after that was over, she said, this is it. This guy is good. My first Sunday here, I marveled. Sandra was the assisting minister. And what a job she did. She stood, robed pretty much as I am, except without the stole. She chanted the curia which in our Lutheran communion liturgy is a very important part of what we do. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Congregation responds, Lord have mercy. Five petitions. She chanted perfectly. And I was just astounded by what I was hearing. And I thought to myself, well, here is someone who really does know what she is doing. But what I learned more than anything was that those kinds of things mattered to Sandra. It mattered to her to come to church. It mattered to her to be in Sunday school and to help teach. It mattered to her to help with worship and to do it the best possible way she could. Not only could she play the organ and the piano, but she could sing. She sang with the choir. But then when it came time to help minister at the altar, I never saw anybody that could do it so well as Sandra. Now why is that so important? You know, what does it matter if somebody gets it right or wrong? It mattered to Sandra. And the reason it mattered to her was that her Lord mattered. 
Everything that went on up here was sacred business for her. And so Sandra, in her graciousness, always did those things. And she did it with a plum, as we call it. She did it wonderfully. But she could do other things. She could teach. She could reach out to other people. And there's one thing that I remember in particular this morning. Our responsorial psalm was Psalm 15. And I'd like to read it to you. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right, who speaks the truth from his heart. There is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not keep contempt upon his neighbor. In his sight, the wicked is rejected, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He does not use things for wrong, but rejoices always in the truth. He does not give his money in hope of gain, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be overthrown. And I thought after that psalm was read this morning, how appropriate a way that is to describe Sandra's life. I don't know about you, but I never heard a bad word from her about anyone. His, her words were always graceful. She always tried to use the love of God in everything that she said and did. And it's because of that that we in the church honor the saints of God who provide that kind of an example for all of us. Sandra was baptized here that month, in fact. She was confirmed in the faith here. She grew to love the liturgy of the church and the Word of God here in this place. And what mattered to her was the love of God in all things. And as she honored all of that, this day we honor it as well. Because you see, as we gather here today, we give thanks that God has raised His Son from the dead. We give thanks for the fact that in so doing, He has brought about forgiveness, life, and salvation for us all. In so doing, He has promised to us that death is not the final word. In all of this, he reminds us again and again that his love for us is so boundless that that love can be exercised by you and by me in such a way that everybody knows about it, not just a few, but as many people as possible. And I know that Sandra gave that love to her family, to her co-workers, to all of us and to her friends. We do give thanks for that this day. But above all, we give thanks. We have a God who has loved us so in Jesus. We have a God who has continued throughout Sandra's life to bless her, to bring her grace, and to help that grace be shown in her life as she lived out that life in our presence. We give thanks to God this day that in Jesus, his son, he continues to call his lambs into his pasture. And this day, this lamb that we have laid to rest is also the one who shall rejoice with us and shall see us again in that wonderful reunion that will take place when the new day comes and all of us shall be raised from the dead and we in turn shall live and reign eternally with Christ in his kingdom. That's what we give thanks for today. And that above all is what Sandra always gave thanks for when she came here. That's why she did what she did and she could do what she could do. And now my friends, we have a new saint in our church. The one whose life has been lived in such a way 
that reflects the glory of Christ to all of us. May Christ's glory fill your hearts and may his wonderful death and resurrection remind you of his love for you. As this day we say thank you God for Sandra Carroll. Thank you for everything she was, is, and will be. And thank you above all for your mercies that you extend to all of us in Jesus Christ. Thus may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard and keep your hearts and your minds always in Christ Jesus and our Lord. Amen. Please stand and let us say one thing.
grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Yes, Lord. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Yes, Lord. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Yes, Lord. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Yes, yes Lord. Grant us grace to entrust Sandra to your never-failing love, which sustained her in this life. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, and remember her according to the favor you bear for your people. Yes, Lord. God, in all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to life. We give you thanks because by his death, Jesus destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death nor life nor things present or things to come shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. beseech you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in life. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Before we start, if there's anybody that needs to sit down, there are at least, it uh, looks like three seats here, so please feel free to fill them in. The family would welcome you to do that. And we'll try not to keep this too long because I know we've got some rain coming. But before I begin, I just want to let you know too that after this is over, you're invited back to the church. There will be a meal there. This is customary that we do at St. Peter's. And we're very blessed that uh, Dan Pritchett, who has known Sandra for so many years, uh, is going to read some scripture and offer some comments as well. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the death and burial of your well-beloved Son, Jesus Christ, you have destroyed sin and death and has sanctified the graves of all your saints. Keep our sister Sandra, whose body we now lay to rest in the company of all your saints. And at the last, raise her up to share with all your faithful people the endless joy and peace won through the glorious resurrection of Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Reading from John 12, the 23rd starting with the 23rd verse. But Jesus answered them saying, The hour had come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternity life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and wherever I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him, my father, will be honored. For 42 years, I was blessed to know Sandra Carroll. She came to work for me at Food Town, but it wasn't long before she wasn't just an employee. We were both brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus as in John 15:15, 15, 15, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Her faith was so evident for God, her church, St. Peter, where she was so involved in so many ways, including assistant ministry, her love for family and friends, Aunt Myrtle and Daddy, Paula and Joni, the list was endless. Cousin, second cousin, third cousin, she tell us about all of you, and especially after every one of the many reunions. Then as the years passed, her Food Lion family became a really big part of her life. It meant the world to her, all and each of you. Sandra was such a worker she insisted that she was a worker that would do anything she needed to do in her interview and oh was she price crew back then those days we used to use a rubber stamp to stamp the price on it and then we went to markers and then we went to pricing guns 
And then finally we went to UPS, Scan Analyst. Sandra accepted every one of those changes and did the very best that she could. Signs, she used to make them by hand and then she used to use stencils and then they came in pre-printed and then even today they have a machine that makes it and she fell right into doing all of that the way it was supposed to be done. She was so excited about the scan analyst job that if you read her license plate, it has scan analyst. <laughs> As the years passed, her speed slowed down, many of us thought. No, it wasn't Sandra slowing down, but as she passed away this past Sunday, all these customers, all these strangers, all these friends have given condolence to all of us to what Sandra meant to them, the woman with the long hair that she donated to children, the wonderful woman that stopped to say hello, the one that asked him, how are you doing? How's your family? You've been sick? What can I do for you? What can I find for you? She was always there. She knew them by name and they all dearly loved her. Oh, she had her moments. Don't we all? <laughs> Her biggest fault with me was she'd put popcorn in the microwave oven and then she'd get busy and she'd end up forgetting about it and it would burn. You know how bad burnt popcorn smells. <laughs> One big job of Sandra was to check the prices in the whole store every, thir every eight or 13 weeks. How she dreaded the frozen food week. <laughs> She would always pray that week, Lord, if you're coming, please do it now before I get into frozen food. <coughs> but other times, you'd find her in the frozen food. Frozen food became her friend, and she was having one of her hot flashes. You could find her there, standing in front of the door with the freezer open, just enjoying the cold. I have so many precious memories, and I know you do too. I could write a book. A big book. But what stands out the most to me, we had a little bit of it on Beverly Street and a little bit on North Colder Street. But up on Greenville Avenue at Food Lion, those beautiful sunrises. I would either call her, we'd both be going in at 6 a.m., the sun would come up a little later, and I would either call her to the front of the store or she'd call me, Mr. Pritchett, come up now and we would see the beautiful sunrises, the beautiful colors in the sky, and we'd stand there and hug each other, and we'd just say the Bible verses, like, for the, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised, Psalm 113.3. Psalm 19.1. The heaven declares the glory of God, the skies proclaim the works of His hands, and then Psalm 118:24. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Sometimes she would even sing a chorus or two with her beautiful word, voice. And then we would just stare at the sky and we would say, if it's this beautiful on this side, can you imagine what heaven will look like? And Sandra now knows what that other side looks like. Oh, to God be the glory. We would hug each other and then we were off. Those wonderful hugs, you know. And then we'd be off back to work. All those years we shared together, we had good times. We had not so good times. And we always shared love, God's love with each other. I could go on and on, but I can sum up Sandra's life this way. Sandra, the only Bible some people will read, or the only Jesus some people will see, you showed them, and you showed all of us. The way you lived your life is right here in this book, and it goes like this, in Galatians 5, 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things 
there is no law. And those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh with it, passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. That was Sandra. We all dearly loved her. And I'd be remiss. I know it's raining. But I'd be remiss. She enjoyed this so much and so do I. And after spending over half her life in the grocery business, it goes like this. Shopping in Heaven's Grocery Store. I was walking down Life's Highway a long time ago. One day I saw a sign that read, Heaven's Grocery Store. As I got a little closer, the door came open wide. And when I came to myself, I was standing inside. I saw a host of angels. They were standing everywhere. And one, enter, and one angel said, My child, shop and care. Everything a Christian needs was in the grocery store. And all you could carry, you could come back the next day and get more. First, I got some patience, love, and in the same row. Fear, future down was understanding. You needed that everywhere you go. I got a box of two of wisdom, a bag of two of faith. I just couldn't miss the Holy Ghost, for he was all over the place. I stopped to get some strength and courage to help me run the race. By then my basket was getting full, but I remembered I needed more grace. I didn't forget salvation, for salvation was all there and free. So I tried to get enough to say that would say for you and for me. Then I started to the counter to pay my grocery bill, for I thought I had everything to do my master will. As I went up the aisle, I saw prayer, and I just had to put that in too. For I knew when I stepped outside, I would run right into sin. Peace and joy were plentiful. They were on the last shelf. Song and praises were hanging near, so I helped myself. Then I said, now, how much do I owe? He just smiled and said, just take them everywhere you go. How much do I really owe you? He smiled and said, my child, Jesus paid your bill a long time ago. And that's how Sandra lived. Thank you. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life, we commend to Almighty God our sister Sandra, and we commit her body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face shine on her and be gracious to her. The Lord look upon her with favor and give her peace. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, by your death you took away the sting of death. Grant to us your servants so to follow in faith where you have led the way, that we may at length fall asleep peacefully in you and wake in your likeness. To you, the author and giver of life, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Rest eternal, grant her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon us. And now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.